Welcome to Primary today. We're going to start off with an opening song. We'll start off by singing I'll Seek the Lord Early from the Katie Gielman YouTube channel. Today we are going over Doctrine and Covenants Chapter 1. In, the, in 2021, we're going to be going over the whole Doctrine and Covenants. And for Doctrine and Covenants Section 1, we're going to listen to the Come Follow Me, Line Upon Line, uh, Scripture Project YouTube channel. It's 1833 in Independence, Missouri, and two young girls, Mary and Caroline, saw a terrifying angry mob demolishing a printing press and throwing all of the printed pages out a window and destroying them. One said, Let's run and save those pages. They're too important to let the mob destroy them. Secretly, they tried to grab as many pages as they could, but a member of the mob saw them. Stop! Get those girls! Don't let them take the papers! Mary and Caroline were chased by the mob into a nearby cornfield where they threw the pages on the ground, laid on top to protect them with their lives, and were as still and quiet as they could be. Where are they? I don't see them anywhere. Keep searching. The mob searched for them for a long time and only stopped once it got dark. The girls had heroically saved the pages. But what were these pages? And why was it so important for these girls to risk their lives to save them? Great question.
This year we're going to be learning all about the Doctrine and Covenants. Do you guys know what this book is? Do you know who wrote it? Or what it contains? Or even why it's important? Well, we're going to be discussing all of these things in today's lesson. Joseph Smith is God's prophet. Through Joseph Smith, the Savior gave us many things, among which are the Book of Mormon and the Doctrine and Covenants. In the Doctrine and Covenants, we learn about the commandments that the Lord has given to His Church through Joseph Smith. Who was Joseph Smith? He is most well known as the first prophet and president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Latter-day Saints believe that God called Joseph Smith to restore the fullness of his gospel to the earth. One day, while studying the Bible, Joseph read a verse in the New Testament that said, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. On a spring morning in 1820, Joseph went to a grove of trees near his family's farm to pray. Joseph knelt and prayed. Joseph said that as he prayed, I saw a pillar of light exactly over my head, above the brightness of the sun, which descended gradually until it fell upon me. When the light rested upon me, I saw two personages, whose brightness and glory defy all description, standing above me in the air. One of them spake unto me, calling me by name, and said, pointing to the other, This is my beloved son. Hear him. Joseph would go on to learn that Christ's true church, the one with his authority that he founded during his time on earth had been lost from the earth after the martyrdom of the original church's leaders. Three years after the first vision, an angel visited Joseph and instructed him to unearth an ancient record hidden in a nearby hill, which Joseph translated by the power of God. This ancient record was the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. The Book of Mormon contains an account of God's dealings with the ancient inhabitants of the Americas. The Lord also sent Peter, James, and John to restore his priesthood. That is, the authority to act in the name of God. Joseph Smith also received revelations from the Lord that taught and clarified eternal principles, such as the importance of baptism, the need for temples where we make sacred covenants with God, and that marriage performed by the restored priesthood can last eternally not just until the end of our mortal life. So, who was Joseph Smith? Latter-day Saints believe the Lord worked through Joseph Smith, calling him as a prophet to reestablish the true church of Jesus Christ on the earth. Latter-day Saints call this the restoration. As part of the restoration, Joseph Smith received revelation from God, bringing back lost eternal truths. By the gift and power of God, he translated ancient scriptures and clarified the meaning of existing scripture too. He also received the priesthood, God's authority to act in his name. Joseph Smith was the first in a line of modern day prophets who have likewise received revelation and guidance from God for all his children, even today. As in ancient times, the Lord's modern day prophets teach us of him and guide his church on the earth. Joseph Smith's life and the restoration show us how much God loves us. He wants us to know the truth and he wants us to know him. Now you know. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the Lord's true and living church. There are many different churches and religions and belief systems that have bits and pieces of, God, of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that have portions of truth and they do many wonderful things to build God's kingdom. But the difference between them and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is that Jesus Christ is at the head of this church and it has all the pieces of his gospel. Everything that was lost is regained in this church and this gospel. We can enjoy great blessings of belonging to the only true and living church where we can enjoy all the pieces. So let's think of some things that are living and some things that are not. So what are some things that are living? How about trees? Or birds? Or horses? 
or a sloth, or your mom, or your brother or sister. Those are all living things. What are some things that are not living? Maybe a rock, or some metal, or what else is not living? Plastic? Those things aren't living. So what's the difference between those two? What, it, what do you think it means to say that we have a living church? A living church means that we have a prophet on the earth today who receives revelation for our world right now, for us today, and that the church is continually growing and moving in the direction God would have us move in for our time, not just for in the past or in history. What does it mean for you that the gospel of Jesus Christ has been restored to the earth? It means that you and your family can be sealed together forever. It means that because you have been baptized by one who has authority from Jesus Christ and have been confirmed a member of his church, you can enjoy the constant companionship of the Holy Ghost. He will guide and protect you. It means you will never be left comfortless or without access to the power of God to help you. What an anchor to our souls are these truths, especially during these times when the tempest is raging. Its words are God's words. In Doctrine and Covenants chapter 1 verse 38 it says, What I the Lord have spoken I have spoken, and I excuse not myself. And though the heavens and the earth pass away, my word shall not pass away, but shall all be fulfilled. Whether by mine own voice or the voice of my servants, it is the same. Joseph Smith and the Gold Plates Joseph Smith was a prophet. He helped Jesus bring his church back to the world. Joseph prayed to find out which church he should go to. <clears throat> Jesus said not to go to any of the churches. None of them were his church. The angel Moroni visited Joseph. Moroni told him about a special book written on gold plates. It was buried in a hill nearby. With Heavenly Father's help, Joseph translated the writing on the plates. These writings became the Book of Mormon. Now we can read the Book of Mormon and we can go to Jesus Christ's church. A message from the prophet by President Russell M. Nelson. President Nelson met with some primary children in a log house in Palmyra, New York. It looks like the house where Joseph Smith lived when he had the first vision. Here are some of the things President Nelson shared with the children. All children of God, it doesn't matter where you were born, or what flag you wave, or what language you speak. We are all Heavenly Father's children, and will grow up to be like Him. Effort and rewards. Being a prophet takes a lot of work and a lot of study. Everything to do with becoming more like the Savior takes effort. When God wanted to give the Ten Commandments to Moses, where did He tell Moses to go? Up on top of Mount Sinai. So Moses had to walk all the way up to the top of that mountain to get the Ten Commandments. The Lord loves effort because effort brings rewards that can't come without it. The prophet's family. They are parents to ten children, nine beautiful daughters and one son. Two of them live in heaven now. They had a short time on earth and they cheer for us in heaven. They are united in their temple marriage, which means that they'll be together forever after they've had their little time on earth. Recipe for happiness. The scriptures are like a cookbook. If you don't have a cookbook and you just start mixing flour and milk and eggs, you may not have a good cake. God has given us recipes for happiness, and it's called the commandments. The word commandment sounds like it's an order, like we're being told what to do, but it's really a shortcut to learning. For example, he's commanded us not to drink alcohol or to smoke tobacco or other harmful substances. Why? So that you'll live longer and be happier. 
Do you think he'd live to be 95 years old if he'd been smoking and drinking? No, and he's happy. Then he can ski with his grandchildren. Something wonderful. Repentance means that every day we try a little harder and do a little more to become like Jesus Christ. Even the prophet is still repenting. Every day he's trying to learn more and be more like how the Lord would have him be. And that's not a punishment, it's a joyous opportunity. Every day he bounces out of bed in the morning and says, Oh, something wonderful is going to happen today. I'm going to be more like Jesus. He says he loves us. He loves our moms and dads and our families. He prays for the blessings of the Lord to be with each one of us now and forever. Through his prophets, the Lord warns us of spiritual danger. The Lord declared that his voice is a voice of warning. How can we learn to hear and obey the warnings he gives? The Lord warns us because he loves us and wants us to be safe. In Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 1, verse 4, it says, And the voice of warning shall be unto all people by the mouths of my disciples, whom I have chosen in these last days. Our Father in Heaven loves all of His children and desires that they know and understand His plan of happiness. Therefore, He calls prophets, those who have been ordained with power and authority to act in God's name for the salvation of His children, to be in harmony with Heaven's divine purposes. We sustain the prophet and choose to live according to his words. This is so pretty. This is the ticket to a real adventure. If you want it. You mean like, go off the path? Mm. Isn't that kind of dangerous? No. See these lines here? The closer they are together, the steeper the terrain. So uh, this spot right here is that cliff up there. Easy. Use the lines, no danger. Well, I vote we get you back to your job on time. Plus, it's getting kind of cold. Look, I heard that there are these fun cliffs you can push rocks off of. That sounds like fun, but why take the chance? Why not? The Lord's house is a house of order, and we need never be deceived about where to look for answers to our questions or uncertain about which voice to follow. We need not be tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. This doesn't seem right. Of course it is. Right, Colton? He knows the way, don't you? Yeah, it's this way. Are you sure you're going the right way? Yeah, yeah. Ah! Oh. Are you okay? It's gotta be downhill. You guys, I don't feel good. Stop, Colton. Let's take a look at that map you've been using. Oh, no, um, must have fallen out of my pocket. It's cold. The sun is going down. You really messed this up, Colton. According to the world's standards, following the prophet may be unpopular, politically incorrect or socially unacceptable, but following the prophet is always right. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. We're in trouble. We don't have time for this. We don't have time for anything else. We may choose to ignore, trifle with, trample upon, or rebel against the words of Christ spoken by his ordained servants. But the Savior taught that those who do so will be cut off from his covenant people. 
through the prophets, the Lord reveals the truths of salvation, the salvation that is in Christ, and He charts the course leading to eternal life. The words of the prophets are like manna to our souls. When we partake, we are blessed, protected, and preserved, both temporally and spiritually. When we feast upon their words, we learn how to come unto Christ and live. We made it. <laughs> the Lord knew the challenges we would face, so He restored the gospel through Joseph Smith. The restoration of the gospel provides spiritual protection that will help us prepare for future challenges that we will face. Think of some of the problems that we face in the world today. What has the Lord done to help us face the challenges of our time? Imagine that you are preparing for a trip. What would you pack? How would it help you to know if it would rain or not during your trip? Or if your car would get a flat tire? The Lord knew what would happen to us in our world and how we should be prepared for it. How do God's commandments help us deal with the challenges of our time? A temple is composed of many building blocks fitted together according to pre-designed patterns. When the Lord commanded the early saints in this dispensation to construct a temple, He declared, but let a house be built unto my name according to the pattern which I will show unto them. The Lord has revealed and continues to reveal to the president of the church the patterns by which the kingdom of God is to be directed in our day. If our lives are to become the temples each of us is striving to construct as taught by the Lord, we could reasonably ask ourselves, what building blocks should we put in place in order to make our lives beautiful, majestic, and resistant to the storms of the world? With the world around us being such a crazy place, Heavenly Father sent us a prophet called of God to guide us and direct us through, through this crazy world. To be frank, they give us answers that are kind of tailored for our day and time. They explain it in terms that kind of profound and going deeper than sometimes what the scriptures would even go into. He's like a leader for me. He inspired me to do the good thing for my salvation or people's salvation. And then he encouraged me to be a good disciple of Jesus Christ. Just like be better. The chief cornerstone and building block of the church and for our lives is Jesus Christ. This is his church. President Nelson is his prophet. And at a personal level, he provides guidance as to how each of us should direct our lives such that our conduct may likewise be acceptable to the Lord. The prophet is, is like a teacher. He teaches us. So like sometimes like the sheep, they need a shepherd. Otherwise we will not we some we may get lost in our life. And just through that I read about all like the, the prophets called of God in the scriptures and once you read about those people and once you pray about it, that's how I came to know for myself. And it wasn't easy for me to I didn't just instantly know, okay, yeah, this man's a prophet called of God, but through reading my scriptures and through praying about it, um, I came to know that that our prophet is called of God. An eyewitness that as we solidify in our lives the practice of listening to and heeding the voice of the living prophets, our lives will be built according to the Lord's divine pattern for us, and we will reap eternal blessings. The word of the Lord lasts forever. His word is sure and dependable. Let's compare things that are temporary, like bubbles or a snowflake, with things that seem permanent, like a mountain or the sun. What the Lord is saying is that His gospel is permanent, much more permanent than the mountains or even the sun. All of those things will pass away, but the gospel of Jesus Christ and His commandments will last even beyond death, beyond the grave, and beyond everything that we understand and know so we can rely on it completely. 
If we take a second to look around, we'll notice patterns everywhere. We can find them in nature and throughout history. Patterns can teach us about life and how things are created. They can even teach us about God and how God teaches us. Throughout time, God has followed a pattern to give us guidance and direction. He does this through prophets. Prophets are like a spokesperson for God, someone who receives the authority to act in his name and share his teachings with the world. You've probably read about prophets from the past, like Noah, Abraham, and Moses, who were called by God for a specific time in history to teach and guide his children. So what do prophets teach exactly? They teach us how to find happiness, how to be a good person. Prophets teach us how to keep our families safe and strong. But the main role of a prophet is to teach and testify of Jesus Christ and show us how we can better follow him, just as he did before. Today, God continues to follow a pattern of providing us with guidance and direction through prophets. These prophets are for us, for our world, with all its opportunities and challenges. Times certainly have changed, but the way God works hasn't. He still works through a pattern of calling prophets. Church History Cards Emma Hale Smith We are going to do something extraordinary. Emma married Joseph Smith and she went with Joseph to get the plates from the Hill Cumorah. When Joseph translated the plates, she was the first one to help write down the words. God called her to make a hymn book for the church. She was the first Relief Society president. Joseph Smith he says, I knew it, and I knew that God knew it, and I could not deny it. When Joseph was 14, he prayed to know which church was true. Heavenly Father and Jesus appeared to him. He helped restore Jesus Christ's church. He translated the gold plate so that we can read the Book of Mormon today. He gave revelations or messages. They are written in the Doctrine and Covenants. Let's review everything that we have learned today. So we started out by learning about the Doctrine and Covenants and about prophets and their warnings from the Lord and how prophets speak for God and how we can face challenges in life and how this church is the true and living church and the gospel of Jesus Christ is eternal even beyond death. Pick one thing that you think that everyone should know about. And then think of someone that you could share it with, a friend or a family member, or just keep it in the back of your mind in case it ever comes up in your life. And that concludes this week's lesson. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Our closing song will be Stand for the Right from the Amber Ting Poncini YouTube channel. Thank you.